Activism in the age of social media has been redefined, unfortunately. Regurgitating a post. Up your profile, your likes, but you don't get your hands dirty. There's no risk. That's not activism. My name is Jakub Boyens, and this is my story. Born and raised in Johannesburg, South Africa, I was actually born in the city. That does not happen that often. Very large city, 1976, in the middle of apartheid. A mom who's a true activist from her early days, infamous at that time for being arrested as a student for protesting against a racial divide. A father who was brilliant, engineer, we knew that he served in the military, but we didn't know too much about him, and he was in and out of my life. But it was a, it was a home that, as far back as I can remember, always fought for other people, always fought for injustice in communities, just how we were raised. My mom raised us that every life has value, that my first job is to find your value. How do I exhort your value? And this is how we were raised, it's the culture that we were in, but it's not the culture of the country at the time. We're talking about a single mom raising children. And, and, it, and it, at time, got really dangerous for us because although we're seen as Caucasian, we were really seen as, as a family that was kind of the enemy at the time. In that climate in South Africa, it got really hostile. I mean, we had 13 home invasions, 13 times people breaking and entering entered our home, you know, either for who my mom was, what she stood for, or just crime, because crime went through the roof. I lived under apartheid. I know what it looks like firsthand. I don't have to read the books, my eyes saw it. I pulled my friends off of beating up black kids for no reason. I wish natural born Americans could understand the gift of the Constitution the Bill of Rights, the Declaration of Independence. This nation was founded for freedom. Immigrants love this country because they know what it's like without it. And I'm watching, sad to say, but I'm watching Americans squander the gift. The very thing we're supposed to defend, the very thing I had to swear an allegiance to, one of the greatest honors of my life was standing in front of a judge, hearing that judge say, welcome, citizen of the United States of America, having the honor of singing that national anthem the first time. This nation, if she was a woman, we're in fact exploiting her. We're in fact ransoming her. We're selling her off piece by piece. And she is like a woman to be honored and revered and protected and celebrated. My sister Ilonka is a fascinating human being. Um, I'll never forget, there was not a moment in our household where she didn't sing. God blessed her with an unbelievable voice, always. Through an industry that she so loved, an art form that she so loved, that very art form called music, is the art form that then ended up exploiting her. Ilonka became a, a sex traffic victim. If we look back, and now with what we know after decades of experience in fighting this, we understand that she was profiled. That the design was always to traffic her, Ilonka. That her talent was the gateway. Her not having a father made her a soft target. Having a father figure step in offer literally her dreams to her. That's the entry point to gain access to the family. And that's not just Ilanka's story, that's today in our, in our country, how predators operate. Her story is so riveting, but it's a story of redemption. It's really a victory story. My sister is a wife today. She's a mother of three, a worship leader at a church leading movements. It is a champion of champion story. There's no human being that is so broken or lost that they cannot be redeemed. We can redeem lives if we make the effort to invest in people and exhort their true qualities that I believe they were born with. I'm the founder and CEO of sharetogethernow.org. We are an organization that fight the crime of sex trafficking and child sexual exploitation in America. I'm on this planet for one reason. 
I'm here to defend other people. I'm not here for myself. The roles of father in our culture is so underplayed and undervalued. If you want to break a culture, you have to create weak men. If you don't have strong men, you'll sexualize women, you'll objectify women. Because I firmly believe this, a weak man will not defend women. A weak man will not understand that women actually have influence. There's a reason for those who believe, if we go back to Genesis 1, that Satan approaches Eve and not Adam. Why not Adam? Because he knew that Eve had influence. Why Delilah over Samson? Why Esther over her husband? Why have we seen women move the minds of men historically? It's because women have influence. But you will not have strong women if you don't have strong men. Unless we halt as a culture and say we must invest in our young boys. We must invest their true identity. We must talk to our young boys on the value of women. Why you should be a defender of all women because you may marry one of them. So young boys today are suffering because their fathers are not championed as warriors. Their fathers are not allowed to be men. And what is a man? A man is a defender. I firmly believe we're born and raised to hunt. And no, American men don't hunt for their food today, then hunt evil, then hunt injustice. Do it even if you're the only one. Activism in the age of social media has been redefined, unfortunately. Regurgitating a post, yelling from a mountaintop. As much as we need truth, and we do, truth sets us free. A nation without truth will fall. That's not activism to me. Activism is sacrifice. It's got to cost you something. You think it was comfortable for Martin Luther King to walk across a bridge? For Rosa Parks to sit down on a bench? There's nothing comfortable about that. So I would argue today whether activism is actually activism or whether it's actually a very selfish act to get self-recognition. These are easy. You can blend into the crowd and get great social recognition up your profile, your likes, but you don't get your hands dirty. There's no risk at all. That's not activism. Very few are willing to walk that line. Very few are willing to risk it all. But if that became the norm, we would solve issues in this country. Talk. Talk is cheap. Go do. Go change your life. Thanks for watching this video. To keep PragerU videos free, please make a generous tax-deductible donation.